Welcome to Living from the Heart. I am your host, Tina Thrussell, light dancer, co-founder of Best You Can Be and messenger of the Shin Dao, the way of the heart. I am delighted to be sharing this show with you today and my guest, Stephen Hobbs. I met Stephen quite a number of years ago and I lovingly refer to him as my gentle giant. <laughs> he is a uh, a big man with a big heart. And I know that he has followed all sorts of very interesting, interesting paths throughout his life. And always because he's followed his heart. And he is one of the most connected men that I And it is always a pleasure to be with him. And I like to stand on a chair so that I can give him a heart to heart hug because he really is that tall. And uh, I think his big stature is just necessary to hold that big heart. <laughs> so before I bring Stephen on screen, I would like to draw your attention to that little crawler at the bottom of the screen that invites you to receive a complimentary subscription to Heart and Mind Matters. That's an inspirational article, a YouTube video, and a quote of the week intended to be an uplift every other Tuesday morning. So you can subscribe at B-E-S-T, the letter U, C-A-N, the letter B dot C-A. Now, without further ado, I bring on screen Mr. Stephen Hobbs. <laughs> Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Tina. <laughs> Well, we certainly had some challenges getting there. For those who watch live, we're like 10 minutes late starting because of the wonderful challenges of technology this morning, but it just kind of kept us in this place of keep smiling. And heaven knows, Stephen, the universe has given you enough circumstances where things didn't go the way you planned and you had to just keep smiling. Oh, my gosh. Um, For sure. <laughs> Give us an example of one of those kinds of things where you had to face some challenging situations yet stay in your heart. Well, I guess it's going to be my signature story, which was 1987 on a road in Uganda, which is in Eastern Africa. And a machine gun came through the window of my vehicle and touched the tip of my nose. And the soldier was holding it and asking questions of my driver who was translating for me. And uh, I was answering the best I could at the same time looking at this machine gun that was right in front of my face. And I realized uh, maybe it might be better for me to move the gun away. So I took the, the barrel and just moved it away thinking if I lose anything, it would be my ears, not my head. And I kept doing that while answering the questions and back and forth and back and forth. And then it was about uh, three minutes later, after hearing all the other soldiers laughing around this soldier because the gun was now wobbling. And uh, my driver says, well, she, the, they've said go. And I said, okay. And uh, so off we went. And I'm looking in the rearview mirror. And this is the the sense of what shifted for me. This is that directional shift. I asked my driver, uh, how old uh, was she? And he said uh, about 14 or 15. So it was a young woman. It was her workplace. Um, the reason they were laughing is because the weight of the gun and it was wobbling. But she had the same face in front of all the other soldiers. Uh, and uh, that was... A turning point for me uh, and if you want to use the word pivot <laughs> it was a life pivot that had a big uh, connection to my business as well because I swore that I would do whatever I could so that no person ever pick up a gun again and I'm doing what I can to have that happen that's following my heart wow you know I I've heard that story several times and every time I hear it it's still it still gives me shivers. I, you know, <laughs> most people, thank goodness, in the Western world will never know what it's like to have a gun pointed at their nose. 
whew, quite yeah. the experience. Oh, it was, and it was very life shifting. And a lot of other things happened while I was there um, that year. And uh, so that was 1987. So that's what, 32 years ago. And I've been on a path of what can I do to make the world better and be in the world? And more importantly, be for the world. Oh, that's beautiful. And so what are some of 32 years have passed. What are, what are some of the things that you've done to, <laughs> to be in the world? and To be for the world? Well, one of the projects that I worked on at that point in time was uh, an HIV AIDS health promotion program for the country of Uganda. So I actually did a national survey uh, with support of some young Ugandans. And we wrote up a report that got funded for health promotion and, and support of the national project. But wow. since then, I, I, I ended up working uh, in HIV and AIDS here in Canada as a uh, health educator and manager of a group of volunteers. I've also went back to Africa and worked as a relief delegate on the South Sudan program. So my job was air operations coordinator for the relief aircraft flying into South Sudan. So that was quite a quite a time to get the correct load on the correct plane on the correct time and the correct location wow. while the rain was coming in. So, and then I've also had the pleasure of um, spending time doing leadership programs in China and uh, in Ethiopia, as well as doing my own programs here. And as you know, there's something called the internet <laughs> <laughs> and learning to move over into the internet with, with my material and going through the ups and downs of um, getting that to, to work. And uh, there's a lot of heart has to be put into that to, uh, to be able to stay with it. And um, so I've just been enjoying myself um, um, to the point, I think you're sort of in your, in your introduction. I think I'm at 34 careers now that I've gone into. Wow. And so my, my latest one, is I'm working to help fund um, mega projects, uh, multi-million dollar, billion dollar projects around the world uh, for communities to support community um, building, community growth. Wow, that sounds amazing. So yes. uh, <laughs> I, I, I can think of a lot of people that um, I can connect you with in terms of their all wanting to create programs that make a difference in the world somewhere. So, um, uh, wow, that's just, that, that's just like mind-blowing, mind-blowingly <laughs> big. <laughs> How do you even go about that? What, what, where do you start? What's the... Well, it, it started with um, someone asked me if I knew of a funding source for some projects in, uh, in Africa. And I said, well, I have a friend of mine who is um, started up something. I don't know what it's about. So I asked him. It found out that it was a great match for what those two were looking for. And that was uh, about two years ago. And so we have been in the dance of getting the funding uh, put together, which requires, you know, applications and conversations and um, making sure that everyone... Um, gets the point that we're raising because it's a new kind of funding source. And uh, really it's just head down and making sure that uh, people understand what you're doing and keep moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Wow. But uh, I will share Tina. I, when you start working with all those zeros. Yeah. You sometimes have to drop a few of them just to look at the numbers and not get caught up. But, you are talking in multi-millions and billions and multi-billion dollar projects. And all of a sudden that language shifts. And um, that one had a little TikTok on my, uh, my head, heart and hands, but I, I got through it and now I'm working on it. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I said, mind blowingly big. So how do you, how do you stay in your heart? Because we know that, if we're going to do work that really is a value and really does make a difference in the world, it can't just come from our head. It can't be just thinking. It has to be work that comes from our heart. And so yes. how, how do you stay in your heart when you're working on something that big that takes a lot of cerebral 
brain work. I mean, all of that coordinating and organizing and paperwork, that's head stuff. Oh, a lot of head stuff. Yes, yes. I'm going to go to David White, who's a poet. And he gave a great definition of work. And he says, work is about discovering and shaping a place where the self meets the world. And I've always so enjoyed that because it meant to be able to discover and shape this place. It had to be a head, heart, and hands connection. So I'll pick up on the heart piece. And you know that I love to play with words. And, yeah. and heart is made up of H, ear, T. And for me, the H is for honesty. And what you've got to do is you've got to be honest with yourself and honest with everyone else that when you listen through your ears, it is a way to get to your um, heart's eye. So it's the heart seeing, but listening through the ears. And if you understand that you've got two ears and one mouth, then you're doing a lot more listening and therefore you get to listen responsibly. That's really heart. And yes, it's going through a mental interpretation and the heart is answering but the T is actually kind of an interesting one. The T is for transition. And with the heart, if you really listen to your heart, then this notion of transition becomes better for you because then you understand, am I going to transition uh, through transaction, transformation, or transcendence? And mm -hmm. all three of them are important in your life. And your heart, this honesty and listening through your ears, through your mind's eye, for the transition is how I'm guided um, uh, every day, guided in these programs as I'm guided in writing a tweet that goes out on Twitter. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. Yes, I love the way you love to examine words and look at what they really need. And it's interesting that you talk about your ears. Just recently, I had a conversation with Sandy Dacey, who was a guest on my show early on in the show's history. And um, while she and I were talking, uh, I, I, I made some comment, and I can't even remember which of us said it, but she said, I think she said, um, well, what you were saying is something for the heart to hear. And it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, there, there was something that just happened in that moment of, of saying that, that yes, our, our ears hear, but our, our heart needs to hear what's being said. And that, that that's what you're alluding to, right? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it, you, you can think of it a little bit more like an energy um, uh, connection, an energy voice. There's something that happens and resonates inside because when you're listening to the words, and, and we know that words like shame and guilt have a very different energy than words like celebration, appreciation, and joy. Yes. And so when you, your heart is listening for those words, it perks up, that resonance perks up, and uh, there's this um, deeper evolvement that takes place. That that uh, you, you, your eyes lit up when you <laughs> talked about yeah that, that 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 perks you up. There's that those positive words, the stuff that touches our heart. That's that's the key, right? That's where we know where we're living from our heart is that there is those uplifted feelings that come. There is that that higher vibration. That's how we yes. know we're on the right track, right? Yes. Yes. And yeah, it, word, how, word, words matter. You know, you, you've heard me say that many times. Words matter. And yeah. uh, sometimes we're very callous and um, flippant about the words that we're using. And I encourage people, no, no, pay attention. Pay attention. It, it's sort of like if you take a look at the word um, conversation and you flip the S and the V, it gives you conservation. So isn't a conversation about conservation, about how do we take care of each other, just like we have the ducks in the pond and we take care of the ducks in the pond about taking care of each other. And that's what conversation is about. So that's another example. Oh, what a beautiful analogy. Oh, I love it. Yeah, every time I talk to you, there's another gem. I just love, love getting a chance to chat with you, Stephen. It's 
eye opening and heart opening always. I love it. Thank you. Thank like um, you. So uh, again, in these many, many, many iterations of 34 careers, <laughs> has it always been about taking the next taking the next thing that that uplifted your heart like how did you go from one to another that many times over curiosity mm -hmm. i have been a curious being and uh, that led me to doing things that were curious so that i would have my curiosity satisfied and i wanted to see the world and i i've done pretty good so far. I've worked on six or seven continents. I've visited, I think it's 60 countries now. Wow. And um, I've had the pleasure of the ins and outs, the ups and downs, backwards and sideways of, uh, of life in those areas. And, uh, but it's, this, it's been this curiosity, this, this deep resonance for learning. And that's why I went actually and did um, a doctorate uh, in uh, adult learning to really understand how adults learn, which is carried over into things like neuroscience now and that. And so I'll just go with curiosity and learning. That's always been the thread that has moved through all of what I've done. That is so cool. What makes that extra cool is that yesterday when I was contemplating what to write for Heart and Mind Matters, which comes up this coming Tuesday, um, the last couple of issues has been a focus, Neil was talking about what makes people successful and the people who are unstoppable have this, this incredible success because they're motivated and they'll do whatever it takes. And, and I thought, well, and that's fine, but there's a really tiny percentage of, percentage of the population that have that kind of drive that will make them so unstoppable. So how do the rest of us get by um, and not just live a mediocre life. And I thought what came to me was it's curiosity. If you can continue to be curious, if you can't, if you can't be so passionate about one singular thing and you'll do that at all costs, no matter what, then at least be curious and yep. and see where it takes you. And and here you are affirming the very thought that I had. So this video is actually going to go into Heart and Mind Matters with this conversation because that, yeah, that really supports that thought. Well, there's a, a phrase that I use that I think will help. Uh, when you listen, you learn. Where you share, you educate. Mm -hmm. So everyone is a learner. Everyone is an educator. So when you are learning, then you are being influenced. When you're educating, you are influencing others. It's, a, it's sort of like a stick. You can, when you pick up one end of the stick, you pick up the other end of the stick. And therefore, if you're picking up learning, you're picking up educating. If you're picking up educating, you're picking up learning. Right? If you are um, engaged in this when and where of life, then do so through um, learning and educating, listening and sharing. It's it's a glorious way in which to go about doing what you do every day, and it's just a very simple gesture. Um, as we've shared, you know, just even with the interpretation of H E R T for heart. Yeah, yeah, and and you make a point there that's really valid because a lot of people think of educators as those people who have that designation, a, a professor, a teacher, right? The people who are definitely at the front of the room. And yet, each and every one of us in everyday life yes. has yes. an opportunity to be an educator. Oh, for sure. And, and that's why I, when I wrote that out, I said, where you share, not where you tell you educate. I said, where you share. It's a a different mindset, a different heart set, a different um, feeling hand set that you're using because everything that you uh, do in front of others, whatever you say in front of others, you're educating. You're letting people know who you are. Yes. And, and that should give everyone a moment to pause and consider, hmm, yeah, how am I showing up? How am I acting? What am I saying? What am I doing? 
because that is sending a message about who I am and how I'm being in the world. Yes. And um, yeah. <laughs> well, for years, people always said it's be, do, have. I, I, you, we've all heard that. And oh, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> We've heard that phrase, be, do, have, and I, it never quite resonated with me. And so I, I said, what other way would I do it? And I realized be, have, do is really what life is about, is if you understand who you are, I am, I be, and I figure out what I want to have, which is sort of this future sense brought to the present then I can figure out what I do to be able to move that forward. And then I realize be, have, do is really behaviors. Be, have, behave, behaviors. And mm -hmm. the do is the, the or the behaviors is be, have, do. And I just realized is that, you know, the ABCs of life are, are really just activities, behaviors, consequences. And uh, whatever activities you set in motion, the behaviors you put into those and the consequences you live with is like a very quick way of looking at uh, living your extraordinary life. Mm. Nice, nice. And we all have that possibility to live an extraordinary yes. life, right? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So some people think to be extraordinary, you have to have done something amazing like climb Mount Everest or uh, you establish a, a multi-billion dollar community <laughs> organized, supporting organization. Yes. And yet living an extraordinary life can be as simple as, Neil tells me this story when he was on his way to Peru. Um, <laughs> in the airport, there was this pizza counter and it was amazing. There were all these food courts, but there was this huge lineup for this pizza counter. And when Neil got up to the counter and the gentleman who served him said, how may I serve you today, sir? And, and Neil said, the man was just so fully present. And so like people were lined up to get to interact with that man. It's not that the pizza was that amazing. It was that that man was extraordinary in his presence and his open-hearted service to those who came to his pizza counter. Well, I always look at that, the notion of extraordinary as really in that phrase I've used earlier about to be for the world. You can be in the world and, and, and live a, a great life, a good life, um, but to be for the world and whatever that is, uh, whatever it is that you decide to be, then you're, you can be living an extraordinary life because you're doing what you love and loving what you're doing. And um, for me, that it's a very simple definition and each one of us can do it. Mm -hmm. It is a simple formula, isn't it? Yes. Well, there's another word, if I may just share with you, and if, well, as people listen to this, is write down the word evolve. Because I think that that's a really important um, word in our lives, which is to evolve, uh, to be engaged in involvement. But what's really interesting is if you take the first four letters of evolve and turn them around, it forms the word love. Mm -hmm. If you take the two middle letters, the O and the L, and flip them around and add the last two letters, it forms the word love. So to evolve is to love your history, right? Looking back as yeah. it is to love your mystery, which is what's coming for you. And by flipping the O and the L around, you end up with the word low. And it was always used as sort of a, um, in the old English, it was low and behold, which is to be present. So one of the things that I've learned about evolve is when you love your history and love your mystery lo and behold you are present mm. that is what it means to evolve wow i thought that was great i it's very simple it's right there in the word <laughs> that is cool that is really cool 
evolve love. It's all about love. Ultimately, everything. That's what this whole existence is. It's yes. about love. Feeling it in our heart, letting it emanate into the world, feeling it for ourselves, feeling it for our fellow humankind, feeling it for all life. I mean, all life is sacred on this planet. I firmly believe that. And when everyone can come to that place of being in in recognition of that, embracing that, then we'll have harmony on the planet. And then we have that peace that, as you said, from that moment that gun hit your nose, that that's what you wanted to see, a world where no one has to raise a gun because we are at peace. Yes. Well, I, I, I remember back at that time, too, uh, there's another phrase that came to me, is when you give up on your words, you pick up a weapon. Mm -hmm. And that weapon can actually be your words as well, but in that callous, flippant, bullying uh, way to picking up the weapon like the stick or go so far as you can, you can go to other weapons. And I'm going, well, if words matter, let's work with our words and let's share those words and in ways that we can evolve this love, the history, love, the mystery, lo and behold, be present. Okay. It, it just resonates. So. Beautiful. So I, I, I was, <laughs> I'm going, okay. So when is Stephen Hobbs going to publish the wise book of words or the book of wise words or however that's going to be worded? I capture all of this. It's a, that's a great question. Um, considering, I think the last count is that I've got 30 books on the go at the moment. And, uh -huh. uh, and uh, I would just, in some ways, like to find a really beautiful spot and just go and finish these all and get them up. But to your point, one of them was, um, I haven't got a really great title for it, but it was going to sort of be something like the, the, at, the Atlas of Extraordinary Words. And mm -hmm. uh, I was going to take the word and then break it up and then to be able to uh, maybe provide a little drawing that went with it. So one of the things I was going to do is reach out to artists who would take a look at the word evolve or the word conservation or the word conversation and give me a picture that goes with it. So that it would be a sort of an image words book. And then I would ask people to take some kind of action. So visual, auditory, kinesthetic, which is the ways in which we primarily learn. So it was going to be called the Atlas of Extraordinary Words. That's as I know it now. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fun. Well, I know a couple of artists, so uh, <laughs> we, we can talk off camera later. Um, before we get to, to, to the close of our show, which is a yikes in a couple of minutes, I want to be sure that people know how to reach you if they... If, if they're inspired and, and want to know more about your wise words or if they want to know about the community funding projects that you're involved in, that sort of thing, what's the best website to reach you through? The best website is wealthmovement.com. Let me spell wealth for you. W-E-L-L-T-H movement.com. And if you have questions for me, it's just forward slash contact. You get to the contact page and you can just send me uh, a note that comes straight through to me. And um, if you just work around uh, the uh, website, you will find uh, information about the international mentoring community, about children and trees programs. And I'm just putting up a, a web page now about these um, multi-million dollar, billion dollar revenue generating projects and how people may want to get involved with them. And uh, again, just use the contact page. That's the fastest way for anyone to get to me. Okay, good. So I've put that on screen, wealth movement, W-E-L-L-T-H movement.com. Yes. And uh, that's brilliant. Well, gosh, that half hour went super fast. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you so much, Stephen, for sharing um, your wisdom, your experience, your heart with all of us today. 
Um, I thank our viewers for tuning in. And I will be posting this on YouTube. Of course, it's on the Shindow page. And I'll be sharing it on my own, own wall. Uh, I'll send you links so that you can share it as well, Stephen. Sure. Uh, everyone out there, when you're watching, share these videos. Let more people see and hear the wisdom, the 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 inspiration that comes forward in these shows. It is about living from the heart. And this is how we will all come to a place of living with more joy and fulfillment in our lives when we live from our heart. I thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned next week when Satyan Raja will be on the show. We'll be moving the show time to 11 a.m. for that day. Um, so, um, Again, thank you, Stephen. Yes, and, and a heartfelt thank you to you for, uh, for doing this. Um, I so appreciate you, Tina. Thank you. I appreciate you. Any, any famous last words for our viewers from you before we leave? I, I would just uh, go with um, accept to live on moving ground. Because as much as we like to think ground is not moving, if you take a look at it on a quantum physics, physics, and metaphysics level, We's moving. We's moving. <laughs> Absolutely. We are moving. Uh, and if we're not moving, holy moly, then we're kind of dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so keep moving, folks. And we'll see you next week. Ciao for now. Take care.